Over the past couple of years, as a legal adult, I've tried to find ways to make my life easier in some way, whether that be in the financial aspect or just being able to navigate around my living space. And I'm not saying I'm the smartest person in the world, far from it actually, but I've done a lot of digging and I've found things that work for me in my situation. Some people these days really love to cut corners and hopefully something I say here today will help make sure that you're not one of those people. A lot of people also take up a lot of bad habits or make some bad decisions. Perhaps you don't know any better and you think that it's a normal thing to do, or you might be one of those people who think doing some of this stuff is actually good or even fun. So without further ado, here are some things that you should stop doing this year or perhaps start doing if you want to have less to worry about in the future. And I know we're four months into the year, but hey, every day is a great day to build a new and productive habit, don't you think? And your good buddy, A. Sampson, is here to help you make sure that happens. Okay, one more note. A lot of these tips are financial tips because a lot of people don't know how to manage their money in any way whatsoever. But a lot of these tips are also tips for your career and just overall quality of life. I guess I could split these groups up into chapters so you can just skip to the parts that interest you, but I strongly recommend that you watch the entire video because I don't want you to come back to this video and feel stupid because you couldn't wait maybe 50 seconds to hear a tip that would have saved you a lot of pain and headaches. Okay, number one. Don't only have or use one bank account. I know it's cool to have just one card, one account password to remember, but here's the thing. There are a few things that you have to take into account. If your account becomes unusable for any reason, you run into a long alleyway of issues and possible scenarios. Your account is suddenly compromised, you've got bills to pay, and all your money is in the bank. Two things can happen here. One, whatever entity that caused your account to be compromised could take all the money in that account, and now you're left with nothing. Nothing. which would suck in general don't get me wrong but it would suck even more when you really need it or you're inconvenienced because you can't use your debit card for like a week and now you gotta pay your friend back the money you had to borrow a little embarrassing in my honest opinion Having multiple bank accounts not only gives you a cushion for your money by putting it in different baskets, but you can also combine multiple benefits from different checking accounts. If you so choose, you can put most of your money in one account for easy access, but preferably not all of it. Number two, when you're picking banks to put your money into, don't pick banks until after viewing their account features. I know this might sound obvious to most people, but some people just put themselves in really avoidable situations. Don't just sign up for bank accounts without reading the fine print and understanding what fees are involved with opening and maintaining the account. There can be fees for lots of things. Like depending on the bank, there's a fee for opening accounts, there's a fee for overdrafts, which is when you spend more money than you actually have in that account. There can be a service fee, and that can be a monthly or yearly fee. There's a bounced check fee, which is when a check doesn't go through, things like that. And frankly, they're all bullshit fees that you shouldn't have to pay, so you shouldn't put yourself in a position to be required to pay them. Seriously, you don't want to be paying $35 in overdraft fees because you forgot you only had 25 bucks before having a night out. I have some banks that I use and I've put all of the links down below so you can decide which one of them is right for the goals that you're trying to accomplish. Number three, once you picked out your banks, don't forget about the savings accounts. This one is pretty obvious too, but from what I've seen, people never have any money in them. Maybe because of inflation and how expensive everything is getting, maybe it's because people don't care enough. Either way, try to make sure you have at least three months worth of expenses. So if something happens, you're not scrambling to find money to pay for things you need to take care of. If something comes up like an unexpected hospital visit or a fender bender. Number four, this is a bit of a bonus tip. I know crypto and NFTs and even regular stocks, bonds, ETFs, certificates of deposit are very enticing because interest rates for savings accounts are like participation awards, but don't put the majority of your money in there either. Just like with only having one bank account, having more than like 30% of your money in crypto or stocks, things happen in life and you definitely want to be prepared. Or with crypto, someone can can find out your information and take all of your crypto and there's no hotline to get your crypto back if that happens because it's not government regulated or these stocks that you've invested in can lose a bunch of their value
value and you end up with less than you started with. Even if you're okay with the risks, just make sure you think about these things and that you understand them 100%. Number five, don't spend more than what you have. This is a bit of a no brainer, but not for the reason that you think it is. This right here is a cardinal sin that people commit on a daily basis. People love using credit cards. The thing is, most people have an understanding of how credit cards work. Whatever you decide to borrow, you have to give back in full eventually. So if people understand when it comes to credit card companies, why can't they just apply that line of thinking to their bank accounts? If you have other bills to pay, you're gonna have to have around the same amount of money each month to keep paying those bills. A lot of people that I've known like to spend money to go on shopping sprees or to movie theaters or to restaurants. If you're that kind of person as well, you can still do these things. My idea is to set limits for how much you can spend in certain groups of purchases. This is what is normally known as making a budget. I know what you're thinking. I don't know the first thing about making a budget. Where do I even start? Well, you came to the right person. For your convenience, I've set up a Google Sheet spreadsheet so you can set your limits without even having to write anything down. Here are the features of the spreadsheet. You can set how much you want to spend on a certain group of purchases or how much you expect to spend if it's a fixed expense. You can add up the amounts you do spend and it automatically finds the difference for you for each month and you can look at the last column of the spreadsheet to find all of the totals for the entire year year automatically. You don't even need to fill in all of the months. If you want to find out how much you spend in total every month, the Mint app is a great tool for that. You can see how much you spend in every category. You can also look at how much you spend on average per month for the year at the bottom left of the spreadsheet. And lastly, you can let the spreadsheet know how much money you have at the start of the year and how much you have at any other point in the year. So you can see the difference between them and see if there's anything to change about your budget. If you want to find out how much money you have across all of your accounts, I personally use the SoFi app for the most accurate number. I've put a link in the description of this video so you can find the spreadsheet in both of the apps that I mentioned. Keep in mind though that you will have to make a new copy of the spreadsheet before you'll be able to use it because it's read only. How to do that is once you're into Google Sheets, look at the bar on the top of the page, click file, and then click make a copy. And then you can name that file whatever you want. Number six, don't forget about your credit score. I get that you might be a little confused about what credit really is, so I'm just going to go over the basics. To start, this can vary a little, but most scores range from about 300 or 500 to 850. As you can probably tell, this range is from worst to best, and this number helps tell lenders about your credit history. When you start off, you'll be somewhere between 500 and 600. Sure, it's not the greatest score, but it can increase pretty quickly with enough knowledge and effort. So on average, it takes about six months for you to have an official credit score but even if you already have a credit score a score of 500 isn't going to seem very trustworthy to most banks so you're probably going well, how can I increase my credit score if I can't even get a credit card? There have been programs that I've used to not only get a better score, but get a credit card that I can use to make purchases with. One of them is the Self Credit Builder Loan. It's a loan in a bank held certificate of deposit or CD that you pay off in monthly installments. You have a couple of choices for monthly payment, 25 a month for two years, 35 a month for two years, 48 a month for one year, or if you wanna get it over with as quickly as possible, 150 a month for one year. The guys itself will report your payment at the beginning of every month so you'll see some changes in your credit history from all three credit bureaus. You can turn on auto pay so you can't forget and when your payment period is over and done with you get back all the money you put in there minus the interest and the fees to open the account. There's a company called Kickoff that does practically the same thing but at a significantly smaller scale and you also don't get your money back but you have plenty of options with them. For example, right now I'm paying two bucks every month and that gets reported pretty quickly as well. Just two bucks. Isn't that crazy? If you can't cough up 24 bucks, maybe you should work on tip number five and budget for a bit. Just saying. This also works a little better for people who already have a credit score, but who also have a low score. If you take your self loan seriously enough, you can earn a self secured card. A secured card is where if you can't pay a bill for whatever reason, they take money from an amount that you prepay. In this case, that would be the money from your self loan. There are ways you can check your credit score as well. Different lending groups use different scoring systems, but the big ones at the moment are the FICO 8 score and the Vantage 3.0 score. You can check the Vantage score with the self app, but you can also check with Experian. They show their score on their own app, 
and it's a FICO 8 score. The Credit Karma app shows you both TransUnion and Equifax scores using the Vantage scoring system. And all of these apps are free, so you can access them anytime and see if any changes have been made to your report. Okay, that's enough of this financial guru stuff. Here's tip number seven. Don't try to cram furniture into a space that can't house it. I've seen people time and time again try to fit a complete fucking dining room set in an apartment that's only X square feet and they think that's okay. And on top of that, some people feel the need to fit a china set in there as well into a place they don't even fucking own. Can you believe it? So I got news for you guys. It's okay to leave big purchases for until you have a place to call your own. As a matter of fact, it's the smart thing to do. If it's just you and a couple of roommates in your college dorm or apartment, you don't need to flood your living space with furniture. I'm practically gonna tear a page out of my textbook to illustrate my point to you. My next destination is the wonderful area of Sarasota, Bradenton. Luckily, my car can handle holding all of the things that I own right now, which is my PC, obviously, my clothes, my shoes, my tech supplies, my grooming supplies, my art supplies, my bed sheets, and my miscellaneous books and household decor. When I move, I'll have to buy a couple of things. To be honest, that's all you really need, especially in apartments like these, you know, because it's an apartment. And on the off chance you can fit a china set inside your apartment, guess what? If you plan on keeping it, you're gonna have to find a way to take it with you when you move. Personally, I wouldn't want to buy so many things that I couldn't fit into my car because that saves you the time and money it would take to find moving services. I know I'm going to be moving two or three more times in my life, so I'm only going to take the things that I absolutely need so I can focus on saving money for more important things like emergency expenses. Lord knows how expensive china sets are. Did I mention how much I hate china sets? Like seriously, owning one of those things is so... 1700s. We don't live in the Victorian era anymore. Number eight, don't let your place get messy. As a child, I only ever lived in apartments. And because of that, nowadays, it prompts me to reevaluate the way I manage my space. Granted, I only ever owned art supplies, books, and paper until I was like 17. And granted, a lot of those books and paper were scattered around the place, but I organized it eventually. And the biggest reason for that was the fact that I misplaced things a lot. And I hated misplacing things. And I thought, you know, I don't want to keep misplacing things anymore. So I thought of something that would stop that from happening. And then I came up with the solution. Organizing. I know, crazy, right? Now, there are a couple of ways that I do this. But when I organize, I try to find ways to group like things together in a container that would make sense for those objects. Plastic drawers work really well for this because you can just dump them in there if you really wanted to. And you can save space by stacking the drawers onto each other. I think that's pretty cool. Number nine. Don't ignore your health. And I'm not just talking broken arms and legs, I'm talking exercise. A lot of people don't work out at all. Even two good reps of 10 push-ups each, I get it, life gets in the way, you're tired and sore after work, you got school work to be doing, but I know a great app to start using just like an alarm clock. It's called Lose Weight by Leap Fitness Group, and there's a version for men and for women. You can start by giving just 10 minutes a day to loosen up your body and giving your heart a reason to beat a little faster so you don't feel like you're dying every Every day. If you miss a day, the reminder will let you know you missed it. There are other apps you can use to train different parts of your body. Once you get the ball rolling with the exercise routine, you could probably work on eating better. There's My Fitness Pal, Weight Watchers, and so many more. They're all kind of different, so I'm not going to explain them, but I think Google Play Store and the Apple App Store do a good job of describing the goal and the features of the apps. Last tip number 10. Try to have a good idea of what you want to do with your time before you graduate high school. The financial world is very unfair forgiving so you kind of have to start thinking of options early on i know for some people it can be a hard choice you don't have to lock into any specific profession but you should probably have a good idea of what types of jobs you would want to have or would be okay with having so that when the time comes you don't have a bunch of anxiety over making the final decision or decisions it would also be a good idea to research some of these jobs and see if they would actually be a good fit for you even if you don't have a concrete idea by the time you get out of high school the first two years of college are just filler general education classes anyway so you'll have time to think about it and that's it when it comes to your life you want it to be the best it can be so you have to take steps to get there you won't get there immediately but if you take some time every day to work on these things you'll get there soon enough thank you all for watching all the way to the end of the video if i give you any good tips make sure to subscribe and you'll get plenty more tips very soon i'm a samson and uh keep an eye out